Can you really think straight and walk crooked? I'll let that soak in. I, nobody fell out of their chair, so apparently you don't understand the cosmic nature of this esoteric thought. But the, the fact is that it's really hard to do it. That, that if you think straight, you tend to walk straight because there's a relationship between our thinking and our actions. I don't personally think it's 100% guaranteed or we really couldn't be hypocrites, you know. But uh, in general, the way in which things operate are the way people think. And so when you see behavior out there, all you need to know about human behavior is people do what they're doing because they don't think there's a better choice in front of them. That's why they do what they do. Uh, a couple of things explain this. First is paradigms. You familiar with paradigm? You know, a construct, a way to think about things. Um, my favorite illustration of, of paradigms, uh, paradigm shift, uh, was a, a story that happened with my daughter and my son and my mother-in-law. They were in um, Alabama. This is a while back, uh, visiting grandmom. My son's about three. Uh, this is my oldest son, and my, my daughter is about one, something like that. And they decide, or grandmom decides, to take them out. Now, the trick was they just passed the law where you had to put babies into car seats and buckle them in. There's a time that that was not required. In fact, the way I grew up driving in Alabama as a little kid is I like to get up on the back ledge of the back seat and look up at the stars at night. That was the coolest thing. So we're sitting, you know, if there had been a wreck, I'd gone straight across through the front windshield. And uh, that's how we kind of did it back then. But they changed the law. Grandmother has to buckle the baby in. That's a big hassle figuring out. The first, our first baby, when we took him home, we got home, I drove, I never have driven so careful in my entire life. That first baby. And we get home and I found out I'd buckled him really well to the seat. I just never buckled the seat into the car. <laughs> so they go. Grandmother takes the three-year-old and the little girl, the one-year-old, uh, Tripp and Laura, takes them to Chuck E. Cheese. And we didn't have this. We lived in West Texas at the time. We didn't have that. We just you know, went out and watched the cactus change color you know, in the fall. That was entertainment. And so they go to Chuck E. Cheese, and they do the whole thing. You know, they get the tickets, they get the pizza, they get scared of the rat. They do it all. And they go through Chuck E. Cheese, they go through this process, they get out, uh, get to the car, she fiddles with, finally buckles in the baby, and my son says to his grandmother, I need to go to the bathroom. Well, there are two things going on. First, she's in Alabama. Second... You know, uh, I don't want to go back in and explain we don't need tickets, we don't need pizza, we don't need to see the rat, we just need to use the bathroom. She do not want to go through that hassle. So she just drove around back, got him out, because there are really, really big trees in Alabama. And, uh, and so uh, she kind of undoes his little pants and puts him there. And he looks at her and says, what are we doing? Which sounds about like him. And she says, you're going to go to the bathroom right here. And she said, his little eyes just got that big. And he said... Like an animal? <laughs> and so for about a month after this paradigm shift, we had a hard time getting him to go inside. It was like, I found my destiny to mark the outside world. So that, you know, is the kind of thing that goes into a shift in paradigm. Suddenly, there's a new opportunity, a new way to think about things. And because of that, you have new choices. It kind of goes with the difference between being crazy and out to lunch. What you see most of the time when people do stuff and you say, they're crazy. You, I mean, you have this, don't you? They're crazy. We can't get to them. They're crazy. They're crazy. That's not exactly accurate. They're out to lunch, okay? And so if you want to use this vocabulary about your superiors, you know, in private meetings, that's fine. But say they're out to lunch. It sounds a little better, and people want to know what it means. And here's how you explain it. Watch my behavior, and tell me what you think about my behavior, just like you didn't know me, and uh, didn't know I had uh, ADOS. Uh, and, and you're watching my behavior, and I start doing this. What would you think of that behavior? What do you think? Say again? Crazy. Yeah, it's a little weird. It's a little crazy. Some people say it's like you're avoiding something or ducking or you have twitches or something like that. Well, here all it is. I, uh, I'm, I'm, I think bats are diving at me. 
Now, who knows why? Maybe I grew up in a cave. You don't know why I might be thinking this. You may have legitimate reasons. I'm out to lunch because there are no bats currently. Are there? Oh, uh, there are no bats currently diving at me, right? So I think something's true that's not true. And if you would help me discover that reality that it is not true, there are no bats, I won't do that because this is kind of extra work. Why would I want to do that? That's out to lunch. That means I think something is true that's not true. Crazy, crazy would be I think there are bats diving at me and I don't duck. See, that would be crazy. That would just be out and out bizarre. So obviously when you see human behavior, what you're seeing is someone that is doing what they do because it makes sense to them. Now, that usually means they're out to lunch, but not crazy. So hold on to that and uh, kind of work with me here on management. So I want to begin by...